ball like a girl! These characters just aren't gonna take it anymore. I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. <laughs> you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? No. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie comeback lines. I am McLovin. No, you're not. No one's McLovin. McLovin's never existed because that's a made up dumb fairy tale name, you For this list, we've taken witty responses from live action films that are quotable or memorable in some way, or come during a pivotal scene in the movie. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. As you might have guessed, these scenes must involve two people, so solo comebacks don't count. Sorry, taxi driver. You talking to me? Number 10. Mistaken for a man? Aliens. <sighs> the Alien franchise already had one strong female character in the form of Ellen Ripley. Get away from her, you bitch! For the follow-up, director James Cameron gives us another with the introduction of Vasquez, a colonial marine who doesn't take any crap from anybody. All right, we've got seven canisters of CN20. I said we roll them in there and nerve gas the whole f***ing nest. As her first line of dialogue, we get this little gem that perfectly sets up the character and paints a picture of what kind of woman Vasquez is. Hey Vasquez, have you ever been mistaken for a man? No. Have you? Oh yeah, she's a badass. He just too bad. <laughs> Number 9. Two Horses Too Many, Once Upon a Time in the West. If the movie Death Wish taught us anything, it's that Charles Bronson is a guy who has no problem messing up a couple of thugs. And when you're getting hassled by hooligans, it's always satisfying to put the fear of God in them before gunning them down. Bronson's gunslinging protagonist, Harmonica, does just that when faced with a few cocky henchmen in this classic Western flick. Looks like we're shy of one horse. <laughs> you brought two too many. It's a chilling scene that leaves us a little, dare we say, horse? <laughs> Number eight, go piss your pants, Greg. Super bad. By the time college rolls around, I'll be like the Iron Chef of Pound and Vage. Everyone knows high school's tough, especially when you want to make it into higher social circles. Well, she's gonna be at the party, and she's gonna be drunk, and she likes me at least a little enough to get with me. Jonah Hill is one such student, and he doesn't take too kindly when his plans for getting laid are interrupted by another classmate. We'll talk what about this later. Evan, we're down two points. Calm down, Greg. It's soccer. It's soccer. You, man. Hey, Greg, why don't you go piss your pants again? It's just one of many funny lines in a coming of age tale that appeals to the awkward nerd in all of us. McLovin! Nice! After all, we can't help but root for Seth, Evan, and Fogel as they get into misadventure after misadventure on their quest to provide a big end of summer party with its essential ingredient booze. These eyes! Are crying. These eyes have seen a lot of love, but they're never gonna see another one like I have with you. <laughs> Number seven, your opinion, man. The Big Lebowski. You got the wrong guy. I'm the dude, man. The wisdom dispensed by the dude has had such an impact on pop culture. It inspired its own religion and philosophy, dudism. That or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or uh, you know El Duderino if you're not into the whole brevity thing. So it's not shocking that he appears on this list with a deceptively simple comeback. I see you roll your way to the semis. Dios mio, ma. Liam and me, we're gonna f you up. When a rival bowling team starts harassing him and his buddies, Jeff Bridges delivers one of the most articulate and intellectually stimulating replies ever put to film. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. That response is very much in keeping with the dude's chilled out vibe. He has no desire to get overly worked up about anything, not even a guy peeing on his rug. That rug really tied the room together, did it not? A. Number six, Yippie Kaye, Die Hard. I thought I told all of you I want radio silence until further. Oh, I'm very sorry, Hans. I didn't get that message. It's always a big moment when the hero and the villain first meet face to face in a film. Who are you then? Just a fly in the ointment, Hans. 
the monkey in the wrench. But for NYPD officer John McClain, his first interaction with his antagonist comes over a walkie-talkie. Yeah, I'm still here. Unless you want to open a front door for me. The baddie in question, German terrorist Hans Gruber, has taken a group of people, which just happens to include McLean's wife, hostage in Nakatomi Plaza, Los Angeles. You're amazing. You figured this all out already. The two dish out some harsh fighting words before the infinitely quotable comeback leaps out and stops the German thief in his tracks. Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? yippee ki mother Number 5. GBPP? The Avengers. You have no idea what you're dealing with. Uh, Shakespeare in the Park? No superhero team is perfect, and with so many of Marvel's elite in one place, there are bound to be a few clashes and inflated egos flying around the room. I thought humans were more evolved than this. Excuse me, did we come to your planet and blow stuff up? Of course, whenever Tony Stark, the weapons tech mastermind behind the Iron Man suit, is in a room, there's gonna be an excessive amount of ego. You're a laboratory experiment, Rogers. Everything special about you came out of a bottle. One of the funniest instances of Stark's personality getting the better of him is when he verbally spars with Steve Rogers, also known as Captain America, whose personal ideals lead him to constantly butt heads with the billionaire brat. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Number four. How do you like them apples? Goodwill hunting. Well, I'm well. Skyla. Skyla. Just goes to show that background doesn't mean a damn thing when trying to impress the ladies. Uh, yeah, I know, I kinda got that impression. Played by Matt Damon, Will Hunting is an impoverished South Bostonian janitor who also has an uncanny ability for solving graduate level mathematical equations and a certain rough around the edges Irish charm about him. Were you gonna plagiarize the whole thing for us? Do you have any thoughts of your own on this matter? Coming from a poorer neighborhood also means that Will doesn't play nice with the Ivy Leaguers. But you, is that your thing? You come into a bar, you read some obscure passage, and then pretend you, you pawn it off as your own as your own idea just to impress some girls? He can't help rubbing it in when a beautiful woman chooses poor and charming over rich and snooty. Do you like apples? Yeah. yeah. Well, I got a number. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Number three, Mr. Tibbs in the heat of the night. You spread them fingers, I wanna count all 10. While visiting his mother in Sparta, Mississippi, Virgil Tibbs is initially arrested due to the presumptions of a racist police chief, Bill Gillespie. Why don't you tell me how you killed Mr. Cobert and I promise you, you're gonna feel a whole lot better. When it's revealed that Tibbs is actually Philadelphia's number one homicide detective. Not just what you do up there in little old Pennsylvania earn that kind of money. I'm a police officer. Gillespie reluctantly recruits Tibbs to help him solve the very murder he had earlier arrested him for. Well, I'm, no, I just thought maybe, uh, maybe you wouldn't mind taking a look at this one. You'd think Gillespie would chill out on his racism after being made to eat such a large piece of humble pie. But he persists in being a nuisance, and when he goes too far, well, you're pretty sure of yourself, ain't you, Virgil? Virgil, that's a funny name for a boy that comes from Philadelphia. What do they call you up there? Virgil lets him know just exactly who he's dealing with. They call me Mr. Tibbs. Number two, you can't handle the truth, a few good men. Defense calls Colonel Nathan Jessup. Of course Jack Nicholson was gonna make it onto this list. Out of all his iconic and memorable lines in movies, this one has managed to rise above the rest and get stuck in our collective cultural memory. You snotty little bastard. As Colonel Jessup, Nicholson maintains a wall of moral authority throughout A Few Good Men, blocking out Tom Cruise's accusations that he ordered the murder of a fellow Marine. Now, are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? And when pushed to the brink on the witness stand, he delivers what is now considered a classic movie line. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. You know what? It is! And you know how I know? Because I went to the f***ing salon with her, and I got my asshole bleached too! And I love my new asshole! Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. You're Norma Desmond. Used to be in silent pictures. Used to be big. I am big. It's the pictures that got small. Have you lost your mind? No. You've lost your balls. Number one. Frankly, my dear, gone with the wind. What are you doing? 
I'm leaving you, my dear. Voted the top movie line ever by the American Film Institute, it's the classic quote that almost wasn't. Please, please take me with you. No. I'm through with everything here. Tired of wasting his breath on Scarlett O'Hara, Rhett Butler finally gives up on their turbulent relationship. Do you know what I'm talking no. about? No. I only know that I love you. That's your misfortune. <laughs> Scarlett tries to gain his sympathy, frantically demanding, Where shall I go? What shall I do? Rhett responds thusly, Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Previous to this film, the word damn was banned by the Motion Picture Association's production code. But a month and a half before the release, the code was amended to allow the word if its use was deemed essential. All the past can be corrected. We're glad someone had the foresight to see how crucial it was to this brilliant comeback, securing its place in our number one spot. After all, tomorrow is another day. Do you agree with our list? Lord, you can imagine where it goes from here. Which comeback line blew you away? Did you order the code red? I did the job! Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did! For more top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. <laughs>